This is Chad Grevelese with Aerolite, and in today's episode, it's going to be a short one. I just wanted to share with you a couple of key lessons I've learned as I've been building uh, now my second business that has helped me to uh, find success and be at peace about all of it. And I'm not going to get into depth with all the lessons. I'm just going to share some quick pearls of wisdom that you can carry with you as you build your freelance business, as you build your career. I'm sharing with you five key lessons I've learned. I'm using this as an opportunity to announce that there will be a season break uh, for the month of November. Uh, season one of Connect Up is has closed. And for the month of November, there will not be any episodes being released. And we will commence on December 5th with the first episode of season two. And I've got some exciting things in the works uh, at, here at Aerolite. Um, a new comprehensive program that I've been developing for freelancers that will take them through a four-month intensive training and mentoring and coaching to get their freelance business off the ground and stable. And I will be in touch with you on more details of that program next month. Lesson number one, the only competition that you have is with your own self. Okay. There is no such thing as competition in your career, in your freelance business, because you are the only one of you. It's very easy when we're starting a business, when we're a freelancer doing something that hundreds and thousands of other people are doing the same thing to think, how can I stand out above the competition? And it's important that you realize that there is no competition because that guy and that girl is totally unique and you're totally unique. And even though you're, you're doing the same thing, maybe you're, you're both videographers, you're not just selling your videography skills to your clients. You're selling the whole package that is you and you are unique. So it's important to remember that there is no competition but with yourself, that you should only ever compare yourself with who you were a year ago. And if you start changing the way you're talking about things, like rather than say, ah, how do I stand out above the competition? Don't talk about it like that. Just say, how can I communicate the value of who I am and my services to my potential clients? You're not comparing it to anyone else, you're just talking about yourself. Because when you're comparing it to other people and you think you're in competition with them, that creates a scarcity mentality because it means that you believe that there's not enough room for everyone to succeed. And guess what? There is enough room for everyone to succeed at what they're doing. There's enough room for everyone to have success uh, doing what they love, even if the actual task itself is similar to what you're doing. So remember that. (laughs) That was an important lesson I've learned as building a business. Lesson number two, trust is only built with yourself and then you experience your self-trust with others. So if you're struggling to build trust with potential clients, if you're struggling to make those types of relationships that build your career and you don't feel that you have a strong network with people that are handing you opportunities because they don't trust you enough, it's because you don't trust yourself enough. So just start telling yourself, I trust myself. I trust myself. Just start saying that to yourself every day. And one way that you can build trust with yourself uh, beyond just saying, I trust myself, is follow through on all your commitments to yourself. If you commit to wake up at 6 a.m. every morning, then follow through on that. The easiest way to build trust with yourself is to start making small commitments and then keeping them. Small commitments with yourself and then keeping them. Like waking up at a certain time, like doing a certain thing, like uh, starting a certain habit. Um, eating a certain food. It doesn't matter what it is. Just keeping those commitments to yourself will build trust with yourself, which means you'll have an easier time building trust with others. Lesson number three, what more can you do to simplify? Always ask yourself a question, that question, when you're building your business. Because one of the biggest things that delayed my goals was trying to do too much and trying to, that I had a broader vision for what uh, my freelance business was gonna be, I had a broader vision for what Aerolite was gonna be yet years down the road, and I was trying to create that now rather than doing smaller, simpler versions of it right now. 
And so ask yourself, how can I simplify my process? How can I simplify my packages? How can I simplify what I'm doing? Because when things are simple, people understand what it is you're selling. They understand what services you're providing. If, you're, if, you're, if it's too complicated, if there's too much going on, it causes confusion, which means your potential clients are going to have difficulty hiring you because they're going to be confused about what it is you're offering because it's too much and it's too complicated. So always ask yourself that question, what can I do to simplify? What can I do to simplify? Because when you simplify, what are you also doing? You're upgrading. Upgrading does not always mean adding more and making it more complicated. To me, simplifying is an upgrade. Okay, lesson number four. When you find it, stop looking or you'll lose it. When you're faced with certain opportunities as a solopreneur, as a freelancer, as an individual, you'll have times where a window opens and if you don't take action, you'll lose it, okay? You'll lose that opportunity, which means you got to trust your heart because your logical mind can't possibly... I've had times where I had a few minutes of an opportunity to do something that was going to change my life, to do something that was going to change my career and business and I did not follow my heart even though I knew I needed to do it, like signing up for a certain program maybe with somebody or talking to a certain person or asking them a question. I mean, something. It can be anything. Um, I've had times where I did not take that opportunity because my logical mind was like, oh, I don't have enough time to come up with a logical decision on this, Um, but my heart knew I needed to do it and I regretted and I I significantly delayed my goals because I did not... uh, take action because I didn't follow my heart. Uh, So follow your heart. When you feel something is right, don't second guess it. Don't overanalyze it. Don't talk yourself into thinking, oh, I need more time to logically analyze this. You will never be able to come up with enough evidence to make a logical decision on a lot, on the majority of the decisions you're going to make in your career and business are not going to have a lot of logic behind it, but you're going to feel it's right. And so you've got to follow your heart and your intuition on a lot of the decisions you make in your career or you'll miss opportunities, okay? You need to get really quick with acting when you know something's right. Don't hesitate. That doesn't mean that you don't use your analytical mind as part of the decision-making process, but don't let let your analytical mind uh, make the final decision and don't let it hijack opportunities from you, but only use it when you feel it's necessary as a tool. Okay, and lesson number five choose to deserve something. If you're struggling to achieve your goal and get what you want, it's because you probably don't believe you deserve it yet. If you have the skills and the education necessary to exchange services to people in exchange for money, and you've put in the time to study and to get the skills necessary so that you can actually deliver them a quality service, that's all you need to deserve the money that you're asking for. But what we end up doing is we end up getting these stories in our head that we need to put in a certain amount of years before we can deserve it, that we have to uh, struggle financially and career-wise for years or even decades before we can finally deserve it, before we've done our due diligence, before we've put in the time. Um, As long as you have the knowledge and the skills to deliver a quality service to somebody, then you deserve high rates. You deserve the money you're asking for. So just tell yourself, I deserve it. I deserve this job. I deserve this this opportunity. And, uh, and, and say that to yourself until you believe it. Because deserving something is a choice. And too often we hold ourselves back. I held myself back for so long because I believed that I didn't deserve career success until I was well into my 40s. Because that was a generational story I was telling myself uh, based on parents and grandparents who, who were living out that story. Um, that even though I had the skills now in my 20s to offer people high value, I was like, nope, I need to struggle until I'm in my 40s before I can deserve um, this amount of money, before I can deserve success and stability in my career. And now I'm no longer playing out that story. So figure out what your stories are and choose to deserve your goals and to deserve what you want. Hopefully these were some helpful, just little pearls of wisdom for you. I have I have hundreds of other lessons that I'll be sharing with you throughout my podcast in the future, especially as I'm interviewing people and whenever I do podcasts as well, that it's just me. Um, I have a library of lessons that I've learned in the last couple of years as, as I've been building my freelance business first and then now Aerolite and um, that I'll be sharing with you. But I hope that you have a great month 
of November. We're taking a season break for the whole month of November, and then we will return with some really stellar interviews and episodes coming at you starting in de- December 5th will be the uh, first date of the first episode for season two of Connect Up. I hope you have a really great day. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving later in the month and that you always think about what you're grateful for. And I know it. on that note, here's a final word of, of wisdom. It, it, with the theme of Thanksgiving being a part of this month, you can be grateful for where you're at and what you have and at the same time seek for more. Too often we talk ourselves out of wanting more and setting goals because we're like, oh, it's, that means that I'm not content with what I have and I'm not grateful. Being truly grateful means that you're constantly setting new goals and you're constantly thinking about how you can progress and grow and get and achieve more because you love yourself enough to progress, to grow, to give yourself those opportunities to grow which means that you're grateful for who you are and you're grateful for where you're at. You can tell yourself, I'm grateful for where I'm at because guess what? You can always be grateful for where you're at and at the same time want to be somewhere else, all right? Because where you're at is is paving the way for where you're gonna be. And you can be grateful for what you have and at the same time want more. You can have both, all right? So just play around with telling yourself that and experimenting with with that until you start to realize the truth of it that you really can have both so i wanted to leave you with that have a really great day i'm chad grevelezo with aerolite and i hope that you have a great month of november and i will speak to you again on december 5th